Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. I'm Andrew, this is Aggie. We're here at Nexus Jiu Jitsu in Folsom. And today we are working on a conventional over under chest to chest butterfly sweep, a hook sweep, a sumigeshi, lots of names. But we're gonna talk about some important, really important aspects of a conventional Ken Ken is what the move, the variation is called, style of hook sweep. Ken Ken is that style where it's like a hopping motion. That's what Ken Ken means. It's a judo name, a Japanese judo name. Um, but it's like a hopping sweep. And um, I think that a lot of times in lower level, white, blue, purple, even I see it at high levels too. And I'm, I'm not special with this, but um, it's something I learned and gratefully put into my game. I see a pretty common mistake when it comes to butterfly sweeps, hook sweeps, and which leg is the catalyst and which leg is the sweeping mechanism, right? Because one leg is certainly the catalyst and one leg will definitely be the sweeping mechanism, but which one is it, right? So we're going to talk about that um, in a little bit of depth here so we can really clarify how to finish these sweeps with precision and with um, control, right? So <clears throat> let's talk about which leg does what and why, right? So can you come on this side? So when I have a uh, butterfly guard, first things first, I want to have active feet. I'm like hooking into her legs. I don't want her just to be able to stand up at will and back away, right? I want to make a connection here. Now, one of the, the issues with um, butterfly hook sweep scenarios is there's two main types of uh, sweeps from here. There's chest to chest and non chest to chest. The chest to chest style sweeps are the ones where you land and you have control. Right? If my chest is connected to their chest and I roll them, I'm going to be very close, tight, controlled and be able to land with dominance and control the position. If we're non-chest to chest, a lot of times those sweeps don't actually end with a sweep. They just end with me throwing them on the ground, a scramble, and then who knows? Maybe I get out from bottom, maybe it helps me get up, maybe I finish the sweep, but it's pretty low percentage against good people. But the, the reason that I'll start with a non-chest to chest sweep is to get the reaction. It's very unlikely this person is just going to let me get an underhook and go chest to chest, right? So we're playing here. I'm trying to get inside, and she's going to be blocking me, playing here, not letting me get inside, and she's going to be starting to try to develop her passing potential. So what I want to do is I just want to grab the neck and the elbow on the opposite side, pinch them together, and start to fall down to look to sweep them here, right? That's the non-chest to chest version. As you see, there's a lot of space. As I try to come up, she tries to come up, we start to scramble, and who knows what's going to happen. Maybe I win, maybe I don't, but I'll tell you what will 100% happen when you do that. You'll get a reaction, right? So when I'm here, and they feel this happening, they're going to post their hand. This hand over here. Well, when they post this hand, all their weights on this hand, all their thoughts over here, they forget that this side exists, right? And that helps me to dive into this underhook. As I dive into this underhook, I use my other hand to slide myself close to them. I want my shoulder as close to her armpit as possible. So I slide in here, really low, my head down, right? And now, as she comes up to square up with me, if she stays out on her hand here, there's no reason I can't go into shoulder crunches, head pinches, wrestle ups, any number of things. So it's very likely she squares up with me and we're here. Now I can control this far arm, pull the elbow to me, pinch her wrist with my elbow and get to the sweep, okay? Now again, which leg does what? Okay, we'll see right now. As I start to go down, never go flat to your back in a scenario like this. Okay, there are times with butterfly guard that I will go flat to my back. This is certainly not one of them. I wanna go to my shoulder point here, onto my shoulder. Now, we have a hooking leg and a free floating leg, okay? The hooking leg, its job is to make sure their hips are pulled up off of their butt and I go to 90 degrees. 90 at the hip, 90 at the knee, 90 at the ankle. 90 degrees along the whole foot. I do not want to extend this leg past 90, and we'll talk about why. This is the catalyst. This pulls the hips off the, off the heels, gets their center of gravity up. Now this leg is the sweeping mechanism. I'm going to extend my leg through, point my toes down at the mat, and I'm going to hop and hop and hop. And as we fall over and roll over to top position, we're very connected. There's no athletic potential for this person. They're just stuck on bottom. And a lot of times when I do this motion, no matter who I'm doing it with, as I get to the position where I can start the sweep, I tell people, I'm like, uh-oh, here it comes, here it comes. And for the next five seconds, as I take my time and make a super long duration sweep, 
they have no option, right? And when we land, I'm in a super stable, dominant position, and I can begin my, uh, my passing, my mounting, and even start attacking submissions from there, right? So again, we're starting in butterfly. I want to create a reaction. It's hard for me to get inside here. So I go here, like I'm going to sweep. Boom, there's my reaction. This noise, music to my ears. It means I'm getting a reaction. I know where her weight is. I know where her thoughts are. So I dive in here, nice and low. As she squares up with me, I go to control the arm here. I pull the elbow in, pinch the wrist with my elbow. We'll look at the other side here in a second. I fall to my shoulder point, lifting this leg to 90 degrees. Now, here's why, here's why. Athletic people, strong people, fast people, educated people in this game, they will feel if this leg starts to straighten. If my knee falls inside the line of her hips, she can just rotate her hips and pinch my knees together. So for example, if I start going here and she takes maybe her right hand and posts it on the mat and I start to lift, just point your hips to your left, point, 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 keep pointing, boom, here. You see how she pinched my knees together? So go back. So if I'm here and I start to extend this leg, my knee will fall inside the line of the hips and because she's posted, because she's athletic, she's gonna be able to flip her hips and pinch my knees together. And now she walks her hips to this side and she passes my guard, okay? All because I tried to extend this leg. Come back. Can you come back? Yes. Another, another problem with that is, let's say I do sweep her by extending this leg. Well, that's gonna be a big uh, uh, motion and it's gonna cause inertia. It's gonna allow them to do athletic moves. So if I go here and I, if I go here, and I throw her far, well now she just rolls and starts to scramble, and we, now we're scrambling and I'm trying to cover the hips and I'm trying to control them, and it's not a very good motion, right? I don't want to use this leg to sweep. I want to use this leg to pull their hips out of position, and use the bottom leg to finish the sweep for the sweeping mechanism, okay? Let's look at it from a different angle so you can see what I'm doing at the level of the upper body. So again, we're here, I just want to get them, I, if I can get this sweep, I will. A non chest to chest, I'll do it. Um, um, Marcelo Garcia does it a lot, right? Obviously, he's infinitely better than me, and I learned a lot of this from him, right? But as I go to hit this sweep, they're gonna post. Boom. All their weights here, all their thoughts here. Look at this gap. Dive in here. As she squares up with me, I'm gonna look to go inside, grab right above the elbow, okay? Now that I have her elbow, I'm gonna pull the elbow to me here, and then I pinch my wrist on her elbow. Don't wrap your arm around their arm like it's an overhook. Because if I do that and I try to sweep her, she can post her hand on the mat. Okay, that, that, I can't allow that. I'm gonna hold right above the elbow, pinch my elbow on her wrist. Try to post your hand at any point. Try to post your hand, try to post your hand. She can't post her hand at all. And that's what we're looking for. And you see how I'm on my shoulder point here, right? This is where I wanna be. Again, this leg goes to 90 degrees. My knee has to stay outside the line of her hips. If my knee goes in front of her hips, she can easily smash my knees together. This is the sweeping mechanism. I walk, walk, boom. We land perfectly controlled, really tight to the position, and now we can smash and pass and control and submit, right? So <clears throat> those are just some of my ideas around butterfly guard, using it as a sweeping mechanism, the chest-to-chest -chest versus non-chest-to-chest, -chest, and creating reactions, right? If I'm in front of somebody in butterfly guard, it's really unlikely they're just gonna let me go into underhooks and overhooks, okay? I have to create reactions. I have to create motion, okay? So as I go for those non-chest-to-chest -chest variations, they're gonna post. If they don't, you sweep them, you make fun of them forever. They're gonna post. They post, you underhook on the, on the far side, and start playing your game from there. When you get that underhook, and you look for that overhook, make sure you're pinching that wrist between your ribs and elbow so they can't post their hand. And then understand the difference between the legs, right? The hooking leg is merely a catalyst. Pull their hips out of position. Get that leg to 90 degrees. 90 at the hip, 90 at the knee, 90 at the ankle. Pick their hips up off their heels. And then you're gonna be walking and hopping with that bottom leg. That's that Ken Ken motion that I was talking about. Make sure when you're going down, you don't go to your back, you go to your shoulder point. Also, don't go to your elbow. That's a big mistake I see a lot. When people are here, and they go here, they go to their elbow. Now she can pull her hand out, or post her hand, or any number of things. There's no pinch, okay? When I go down, pinching, I go to my shoulder. Pull your hand out? Yeah, right. 
It's pinched between my elbow and my body, okay? So make sure you're checking all those boxes off, right? Practice it a lot until you get really refined there. And then it's not gonna matter how good or athletic or fast or big or strong they are. You have the structure in place, okay? Understand the difference between the legs, understand the control aspects, and you're gonna finish these sweeps with a lot of pressure, a lot of control, a lot of connection, right? That's what we want. Knocking somebody down and not finishing the sweep is not useful. It's a waste of time and energy. Knock them down, finish the sweep, and then progress to your finishes, right? Again, I'm Andrew, this is Aggie. We're here at Nexus Jiu Jitsu in Folsom. Comment, subscribe. Click like. the like, like, like the video. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Good job.